Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this public meeting of council of Tuesday, the February the 18th, 2020, to order. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof? Approval or amendment of the meeting agenda. Could I have a motion moved by Councillor Reeby, seconded by the Deputy Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. So the item of business tonight is financial. So the floor, Mrs. Lochte, our treasurer, it is yours for the rest of the meeting. Thank you. I'll have to read uh, this material. This meeting has been called to consider the proposed bylaws to establish annual fees to be charged for garbage collection and disposal and the waste management facility, water and sewer rates, and to adopt the 2020 budgets for the City of Pembroke and local boards. Clerk, could you please tell us how this particular meeting was given notice? An advertisement was placed in the Pembroke Observer and News on February 13, 2020, and posted on the City's website and bulletin board since January 24th, 2020. Thank you. Mrs. Lochte, the floor is yours. Thank you, and good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight, I will present an overview of the 2020 budget as approved by the Finance and Administration Committee. This committee met and deliberated the city's budget over two days on January 22nd and 24th, and these meetings were open to the public. Overall, the committee has approved an operating budget totaling 30.6 million and capital projects of 18.4 million. To support this budget, the city will raise 21.1 million through property taxes, which represents a tax levy increase of 1.9% and a tax rate decrease of 0.01%. And this will raise an additional $249,000 for infrastructure improvements in the city. In terms of the city's tax ratios and other rates, the Finance and Admin Committee has recommended no changes to the city's tax ratios. These tax ratios set the different tax rates between property types, including residential, multi-residential, commercial, and industrial. So changing ratios uh, can shift the tax burden between the different property types, and there will be no changes for this in 2020. There will also be no change in the city's curbside collection and disposal fees and no change to the Ottawa Valley Waste Recovery Centre fee. Based on budget recommendations by the Pembroke Business Improvement Area Board of Directors, the PBIA 2020 budget is set at $196,000, which will increase PBIA rates by 2.69%. So to put this in perspective, a commercial property assessed at $200,000 in the PBIA, PBIA area would pay about $38 more per year as a result of this increase. Turning now to water and sewer rates. Under Ontario's Safe Drinking Water Act, the city is required to prepare financial plans to ensure that the city raises enough revenue to operate the system and continue to provide safe drinking water to our community. In 2019, Watson and Associates economists prepared a rate study for the city, which looked at the projected water and sewer operating and capital costs over a 10 year period from 2020 to 2029. Their preliminary findings were presented to the Finance and Admin Committee in the fall, and it included recommendations to increase water and sewer rates annually, as well as realign rates between metered and non metered. Uh, customers to provide greater equity between the two groups based on consumption. Even with these proposed annual rate increases, their findings indicated the need for new debt to continue to fund capital requirements for water and sewer, and they recommended new debt of $13.5 million for water and $27.8 million in sewer. So staff will be reviewing these debt recommendations in closer detail, as uh, we develop the city's 2021 asset management plan. The city operates a very high quality drinking water system for our residents. Uh, the city has received a compliance rating score of 100% for seven out of the last nine years. And in 2019, there were zero adverse water quality incidents 
related to microbiological parameters. So this is a direct result of the rigorous and proactive sampling and monitoring that the city does. The city's 2020 requirement for water services includes a $3.9 million operating budget and a capital budget of 3.5 million. Based on the average annual rate increases recommended by Watson, flat water rates reflect a 5.7% increase and meter water rates a 9.8% increase. The city's 2020 requirements for sewer services includes a $5.7 million operating budget and a capital budget of $6.1 million. Based on the average annual rate increases recommended by Watson, flat sewer rates reflect a 5.2% increase and metered sewer rates a 6.9% increase. Overall, the 2020 changes in property taxes, garbage uh, collection, waste disposal, water and sewer fees will impact the city's average properties as follows. So a residential property assessed at $188,000 would see an $83 increase per year in all of these things combined. Uh, a multi-residential property eight unit assessed at $671,000 would see an increase of $257 per year. A commercial property assessed at $213,000 would see an increase of $25 per year. And finally, an industrial property assessed at $184,700 would see an increase of $49 per year. So in January, the Finance and Administration Committee approved the community's strategic plan for the period from 2019 to 2022. And this plan set goals for five key priorities, including infrastructure and the development of a long-term asset management plan, economic development with a focus on marketing, the waterfront and the community improvement program, uh, shared service and partner agreements with our neighbors, development of an active living master plan, and transportation with a focus on assessing and developing transit opportunities. The 2020 budget supports these strategic priorities through funding earmarked for building condition assessments planned for the PMC water and sewer plants, ongoing financial support of the city's CIP program, as well as the development of an economic development website, an active living master plan, and a destination and traffic count study which can aid in future transit planning. For shared services, existing staff will continue to support this priority in 2020. Moving on now to the city's operating budget. Uh, this slide provides a detailed comparison of the 2019 budget to the 2020 budget for every major department in the city and includes a breakdown of revenues and expenses for each department. In total, the 2020 budget reflects total revenues and total expenditures of $30.6 million. <clears throat> the primary source of the, 30s, of the city's $30.6 million in revenue comes from taxation at 67.7% of the total followed by federal and provincial grants at 12.4%. Uh, garbage and recycling charges make up 5% of the city's total revenues. Uh, user fees are the next major source with recreation user fees and charges representing 4.4% and other general user fees at 42 Interest and investment income make up 3.6% and payment in lieu of taxation, which is essentially tax revenue generated from government owned properties is at 2.2%. And finally, reserves make up the final component of revenue at 0.4%. As noted on the previous slide, federal and provincial grants are the second largest source of revenue for the city. In 2020, the city will receive about 1.5 million from the Ontario government for the Ontario Municipal Partnership Fund, or OMPF. There has been some concern over the past few years that this grant was at risk of being cut or eliminated by the province. However, we have recently received word that this program will be continuing until at least 2021. In 2019, 
$90,000 worth of funding from the Community Policing Partnership Fund and $35,000 from the Safer Communities Grant was identified as being at risk of being cut by the provincial government. And these grant programs were indeed cut in 2019 in favor of application-based grants in future. For infrastructure funding, the city expects to receive almost $700,000 from the Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund, or OCIF, which represents at about a $36,000, $37,000 increase uh, from 2019. The city will also receive about $842,000 from federal gas tax funds and is estimating to receive about $106,000 in federal gas tax funds for transit for the handy bus, but we are awaiting confirmation of this funding amount at this time. In addition to these formula-based grants, the city has applied to a number of different grant programs that are reflected in the 2020 budget. Um, but at this time, funding for these projects are not confirmed or guaranteed. So the city has applied for $73,000 of funding to the Ontario Municipal Modernization Program for a service delivery and review of the operations department. Uh, the city has applied to two investing in Canada's infrastructure grants, uh, short form ISIF, uh, $820,000 for road construction on Pembroke Street West from Christie to city limits and $1.3 million for the replacement of the Townline Force Main uh, sewer project. In addition, the city has applied for $1.3 million under the Connecting Link program for traffic signal upgrades in the city. Uh, should the city not be successful in obtaining these grants, these projects will likely be deferred. The city has been successful in obtaining a grant under the Community Safety and Policing Program to develop a community safety and well-being plan as required by legislation. So 25,500 of grant funding has been included in the 2020 budget for this initiative. Turning now to the city's operating expenditures, this graph shows how these expenditures break down between the different city departments. 15.8% uh, of the city's total operating expenditures will go towards policing and the contract the city has with the OPP. 15% of the city's budget will go towards road operations. 14.7% uh, towards city administration, which includes finance, uh, human resources, and strategic partnerships with outside organizations. County and shared services make up 13.2% of total operating expenses, and we will discuss this in greater detail in a minute. Uh, parks and Recreation, 11.4. Um, the Fire Department is 11%. Uh, capital Financing at 7. Uh, garbage and Recycling at 5. Uh, and then going down to Planning, Economic Development, Mayor and Taxation. There are several new items and changes that have been included in the city's 2020 budget. Uh, just under $24,000 has been set aside for the consideration of a new snow windrow program, which will assist seniors with the clearing of snow left at the bottom of the driveway after plowing operations. This program is still in the conceptual stage. There are a lot of details to work out, including uh, eligibility and logistics. So stay tuned for further updates as this program is considered and developed by council and staff over the coming months. In addition to this windrow program, there has been a shift in recreation programming and events funding with dedicated budgets uh, being created for both youth and seniors programming at $13,500 each, uh, which has been more than offset by a reduction in general special events production budget, which has decreased by 44,500. The 2020 budget also includes various park improvements, including tree removal at Pansy Patch Park, new park equipment at Lee Street Park, and roofing at the Rotary Gazebo and Minor Ball Building. <coughs> Other highlights of the city's 2020 budget include a 2% wage increase for the city's unionized and non-unionized staff, a uh, $27,500 decrease in budgeted parking meter and infraction revenues, and this is related to the six-month trial of two-hour free parking downtown. Uh, municipal insurance costs have increased by $89,000 in 2020. 
Um, but we have seen a decrease of $41,000 in our OPP contract cost and a $14,000 decrease in our library transfer, as well as a $30,000 decrease in animal control and OSPCA contract costs overall, um, and a $45,000 increase in roads resurfacing for projects planned in 2020. Earlier in the presentation, we saw, we saw that shared services make up 13.2% of the city's total operating expenditures. And the bulk of this funding goes to the County of Renfrew and funds various programs, including the Ontario Works Program, uh, Child Care, the Paramedics Land Ambulance, Social Housing, and Homes for the Aged, including the Bonachere Manor and Miramichi Lodge. Other shared services include the health unit. Overall, we can see that the city's share of these costs are expected to increase by $109,000 in 2020. So turning now to capital. Um, uh, capital spending in the 2020 budget includes 18.4 million of capital projects, plus an additional $600,000 in road resurfacing projects. So in total, the city can expect to spend 2.2 2 million on its buildings, facilities, and parks, 7 million in roads and bridge improvements, uh, $400,000 in fleet renewal and other equipment, uh, 6.1 million in sewer system projects, and 3.5 million in water supply system projects. The details of these projects can be found on the next few pages of the presentation, so I won't go over every single project, but uh, some of the highlights include uh, for buildings, uh, foundation repairs at City Hall, a training pad at the Fire Hall, accessibility upgrades at the Kiwanis Walkway, new energy efficient LED lighting at the PACC, and emergency roofing repairs at the PMC's east entrance. 2020 building projects also include the completion of upgrades and repairs to the operations building on River Road, um, including new HVAC and an accessible front entrance and some LED lighting. As well as emergency backup power for the operations garage, foundation repairs, security, environmental controls, and storage. Nobody ever has enough storage. <laughs> Uh, for parks, the 2020 capital budget includes paving the dry dock area at the marina, upgrades to Riverside Park ball diamonds, mini golf and sewage, as well as continuing waterfront park improvements. For roads and bridges, capital works in 2020 include the pedestrian crossing at Angus Campbell Drive, uh, road and storm sewer uh, upgrades at Boundary Road, the rehabilitation of the Foster Fraser Bridge, on Bennett Street, which is a $1 million project, as well as works on Miller Street and Nelson Street. Also listed here, we can see that Pembroke Street West uh, is a $1 million project, which is linked to grant application funding. Um, and finally, the city will work uh, to continue updating street lights to energy saving LEDs with work this year moving to Pembroke Street East from the bridge to William Street. Continuing on roads and bridge projects, we can see that a $1.5 million investment in traffic signal upgrades is planned in 2020, again, contingent on connecting link grant funding. Uh, the Victoria Street reconstruction uh, will, should be wrapped up this year, and a number of resurfacing projects are on the books for 2020, including the completion of Thompson Street and resurfacing work on sections of Carmody, Francis, Hunter, and O'Brien Street North. For vehicles and equipment, uh, three half-ton pickup trucks need replacement in 2020, along with a road service truck, a utility trailer, a loader, a diagnostic scanner for the garage, and as well as a new boat to support the marina's operations. In sewer, a number of projects are planned, including work along the Dominion to Draper sanitary sewer line, the ongoing refurbishment of a digester at $1.8 million, and various projects at the Pollution Control Centre, including roof design, a heat exchanger, and a smoke and heat detection system. 
Sewer capital works will also include drainage on Poplar Ridge and the Townline Force Main Replacement Project, which is a $2.2 million project uh, this year in 2020, contingent on grant funding. There are also a number of smaller projects planned in 2020 at the Townline lift station, including pump replacement, generator design, and a heating replacement. For water, capital projects include the Muskrat River water main crossings at Alfred and William, as well as the Mary Street Bridge. Uh, the River Road water main also requires work from Townline to Laurier and Laurier to Bell. In addition to general pipe rehabilitations, water meter replacements, and water main valve replacements, Capital Works has also been budgeted for the water purification plant, or the WPP, and includes filters, drains, pumps, tank gaskets, and a smoke and heat detection system. So where is all this money coming from? The city will finance these projects with $4.7 million of funding carrying forward from 2019. $8 million from reserve and reserve funds, about $100,000 from cost sharing, $4.1 million from grants, and finally $2.1 million of funding coming from taxation. So this next slide shows the capital financing broken down in more detail between the different sources of funding and the different uh, types of projects. So this detail is available for all of the different categories of capital projects in the 2020 budget for your information. So how does our capital spending compare to previous years? As we can see from this graph, certainly our infrastructure spending is much higher than average. In 2020, we are planning to spend about $16.6 .6 million, and this is certainly a reflection of the number of grants we have applied for in this budget cycle. Parks and facility spending is on average with uh, previous years at about $2 million. Uh, equipment and fleet uh, is also, you know, within previous year's averages at about 400000 of spending in 2020. With $8 million of capital financing coming from reserve and reserve funds, let's take a look at these funds in more detail. So the city's general reserve balances are expected to decrease by about a million dollars in 2020 from an estimated balance of $7.6 million at the end of 2019 to 6.6 .6 million at the end of 2020. Shown in, in the table on the left-hand side is more detailed information on the different reserves held and the changes expected in 2020. In the transfer to column, we can see the city does make regular contributions to a number of capital-related funds from its operating budget every year. Uh, in 2020, these transfers total about $837,000. Looking at the transfers from column, we can see that we are expecting to use about $1.8 million of these reserves, and these withdrawals are being made essentially to support the city's 2020 capital projects. <coughs> Similarly, for reserve funds, we can see that the city's reserve fund balance is expected to decrease by about $2.5 million from an estimated 11.5 at the end of 2019 to about 9 million at the end of 2020. So these reserve funds are received and held for specific purposes and include monies that we receive from the federal gas tax program and development charges related to new development. Uh, in the transfer in column, we can see that the city is expecting to receive an additional $1.3 million in transfers in 2020. In the transfers out column, we can see that the city is expecting to use about 3.8 million of reserves, primarily on capital projects, including 650,000 in the general capital fund related to the city's portion of costs for our grant applications, and 2.2 million in federal gas tax funding for various projects, including the Foster Fraser Bridge. Overall, 2020 reserve usage is linked to our planned capital spending and the different grant applications submitted for capital infrastructure projects across the city. At the end of 2020, the city is expecting to hold a total of $15.6 million in reserves, so still a very healthy balance overall. Turning now to the city's debt, uh, the city is not expecting to incur any new debt in 2020. 
The city will make about 1.7 million in principal payments, and this will bring the city's total debt outstanding to 17 million at the end of 2020. Looking at our development charge reserve fund balance, at the beginning of 2020, the city will have uh, about $364,000 in the development charge reserve fund, which is broken down into the different service categories on the slide. Um, you will see a, a number of funds in the negative right now, and these funds are essentially borrowing from the environmental fund. And as per section 37-2 of the Development Charges Act, advancement of development charge funds is permitted to finance eligible projects. So in 2020, the city will begin work on an updated background study to support the city's development charge regime with the help of an outside consultant. So the negative status of some of these funds will be raised at that time to determine next steps and consideration into the next uh, five year study period. A detailed breakdown of development charges collected is provided in this next slide for your information. And this shows the history from 2006 to 2019, as well as again, a breakdown by service category between fire policing, transportation, environmental, recreation and culture, and the development charge study. Um, this slide shows how development charge funds were used in 2019 on which projects, as well as what's been budgeted for in 2020. So as we can see here, the, the major use of development charges in 2020 will be for the town line lift station and force main. Turning now to the city's rates, as previously stated, there will be no change in garbage collection and the Ottawa Valley Waste Recovery Center rates with the details provided here. For water and sewer rates, the rates have been adjusted for rounding and reflect the average rate increases proposed by Watson and Associates economists in their rate study. So flat and metered rate details are listed in this table for your information. And the average residential taxpayer can expect to pay $5.16 more per month in water and sewer in 2020. Overall, the impact of rate changes in property taxes, education, garbage, water, and sewer are all, are all itemized in detail in this next slide. From an affordability point of view, <clears throat> feedback from the Finance and Admin Committee indicated a desire to limit any increases to the current annual rate of inflation of 1.9%. And as we can see at the bottom of the table, for the average residential taxpayer, the total combined change has met this objective with a combined increase of 1.9%. Um, for other property types, these changes translate to a 0.9% increase for the average eight unit multi-residential property, 0.2% increase for the average commercial retail establishment and 0.4% increase for the average industrial property. Finally, a common question we get asked by our residents is where do my city tax dollars go? So this slide outlines for every $1 of municipal taxes collected, where the money goes. So as we can see, uh, for every $1 collected, 20 cents goes to policing, uh, 20 cents goes to road operations, 19 cents to county and shared services, uh, 15 cents to fire, et cetera. So this essentially concludes my presentation of the 2020 budget. Um, in closing, I would just like to give a shout out to uh, former city treasurer, Leanne McIntyre. Although she officially retired at the end of 2019, she has continued to support the uh, 2020 budget process to ensure a smooth and seamless transition. And I really appreciate her time, input and advice over this pro process. So thank you very much, Leanne. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Worship. Um, the Finance Committee chairs uh, basically report that the budget was a well thought through project uh, process. There's nothing ever easy about uh, deciding well, there's always more wants than there is money to go around. So I think this council did its best job it could with trying to uh, figure out what, where we could best spend the money. And hopefully the uh, ratepayers uh, you know, appreciate the fact that uh, there is a small tax increase, but I think we've really held it to a minimum. Thank you. Thank you. The Chair of Operations, please comment. 
Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I want to begin by thanking Ms. Lochte and Ms. McIntyre, as well as all of the staff that go behind that makes uh, this budget process. And this year, I think, was uh, even smoother than previous years. I didn't think it was possible, but it was smoother than previous years. Um, as was just commented, it's always a balancing act when you look at the, the fact that there's one rate pair and we always need to be cognizant that there is one rate pair uh, when we're looking at water, sewer, taxation and so forth and trying to pull it all together to make the, uh, uh, the budget work. And uh, I, I like to think from an operations perspective that certainly this particular budget uh, does that. Uh, as we've just heard, and I'm not going to go over all of them, but there's many infrastructure projects this year, uh, whether it be uh, the Carmody Street, Francis, Hunter, O'Brien, completion of Victoria Street. We heard about the Foster Fraser Bridge, which I stand to be corrected, but I think it's the last on, on, the, <laughs> on the rotation in terms of uh, rehabilitation of bridges, at least for the time being. Uh, phase three of the LED project. So there's just a number of different uh, uh, projects that uh, are going to be accomplished. So the council is is doing something, um, and the the tax dollars are being used uh, uh, wisely. I find it interesting, uh, Ms. Lochte, in terms of your comments about the uh, the reserves and, and reserve funds and uh, uh, about the utilization of that uh, to to make these different projects happen. And I just remind council that, that that's one of the reasons why we need to be careful when there is surpluses in a given year, what are we doing with the surplus as opposed to just utilizing it? Uh, you know, it's always uh, helpful if one was putting it into, uh, into the reserves as we have done for a number of years now. Um, I want to comment about uh, the there was various uh, uh, challenges that were raised uh, during our budget process and one of them was the Boundary Road. Uh, it was received loud and clear from uh, Mr. Lewis that uh, Boundary Road needs to uh, proceed. It, I believe that was loud and clear and, and heard by Council, uh, but that this Council decided to defer that project for this particular year to allow uh, discussions with Laurentian Valley and I firmly believe that Laurentian Valley needs to step to the uh, plate to uh, uh, to allow the city to uh, proceed in a joint fashion uh, with Boundary Road next year. I don't believe from what Mr. Lewis tells us that we can put it off any longer. So I'm going to make that particular comment. But uh, all in all, um, it's uh, nice to see another uh, another budget uh, uh, arrived at uh, and uh, thoughtful. And I don't want anyone to to, uh, to think that we uh, that it was rushed or anything like that. I think it, it's to the dedication of the, uh, the, the staff that make sure that uh, the, the uh, budget process unwinds the way it does in such a, uh, an efficient manner. So, uh, so kudos to staff for doing that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, councillors, any comments? Okay. Is there anyone in opposition to this particular bylaw? People, are there, is there anyone in the room in support of the bylaw? So I'd ask people who are here that if they have submissions, would they please leave them with the clerk? I'd also ask uh, uh, those who want to receive further notice to sign the list provided indicating their name, address, and postal code. As our treasurer mentioned, it's a real pleasure to see Leanne here this evening, our former uh, treasurer. In her role, basically, as a uh, former treasurer, she, she played a significant role in helping our new treasurer and also the transition uh, to the 2020 budget process. So the support, Leanne, has been fabulous. And again, I know as a council, we really appreciate it. And uh, so at, at this time, I'd ask Councillor Plummer, please, to make a comment. Thank you. Thank you. As this will be Leanne McIntyre's final budget, council appreciates the many years of hard work and dedication to the city of Pembroke. It takes preparing the budget for council's review, Council appreciates the time spent behind the scenes, not just here at the council table. You have been our guiding light in helping us understand the many different financial burdens that happen to all departments of the City of Pembroke. We understand there is, a, there is only one taxpayer, and you have helped us guide in decision making on best practices and understanding projects and responsibilities. We wish you all the best in your retirement and a sincere thank you from all of us at the City of Pembroke. Thank you. And now the Deputy Mayor has some words as well. Thank you, Councillor Plummer. Um, what do you say when, a, uh, when you lose a trusted member of staff or instrumental in playing a crucial role in the City of Pembroke? In the past 10 years, I have trusted and respected Ms. McIntyre as the City Treasurer. As with all smaller, full-service municipalities, Ms. McIntyre has been tasked with more and more duties and to work harder and harder doing what is necessary for the city and, more importantly, what the residents 
of the city of Pembroke deserve. There's many examples of the tenacity and dedication of Ms. McIntyre brought to her position as treasurer. Um, and I, I've listed off seven of them and I know that there's many, many more, uh, but here we go. <laughs> um, the first one, uh, Ms. McIntyre being instrumental in reducing the amount of the outstanding taxes from when she first became treasurer while continuing to be compassionate and understanding of our taxpayers. And I know Councillor Frenier mentioned this one as part of our, our budget process this year. The next one, uh, let us not forget about the transition to OPP from Pembroke Police. This required her to look at the cost of a new facility, the cost of transitioning officers and staff, the ability to uh, work with many levels of government to ensure that Pembroke could transition and that the residents would be better for it, but not sacrificing safety or actual policing, but benefiting in fi uh, fiscal savings. That one was a, a large one. I, I, there was many times that I thought it was like, how is she pulling this off? How is she going to arrive at the uh, numbers? And as I was chatting with the, his worship today, bang on. Um, every budget looking at the best interests of the residents, the ability of the residents to pay, the need to continue with sufficient funds to run the city, and the balancing act that has to be played. The last several years under Ms. McIntyre's tight grip, the budget arrived at lower increases than our neighbours while maintaining a comparable level of service. And when needed, <laughs> she wore the hat with the horns when the budget process was tough. <laughs> Uh, next one, ensuring that the new police building and fire hall came in on budget and under the watchful eye of Ms. McIntyre. The next one, moving the entire budget process up from June to January to ensure that tendering happened earlier, that projects happened earlier, and saved the taxpayers money. The next one, continuing to face challenges caused by the federal and provincial government to make the city a better place for all. The next one, to analyze what council's wishes are and look at the various ways to achieve these goals. And it never ceases to amaze me that she would look at our reserves, look at the reserves funds, development charges, and somehow deal with all of that and say, we can make this happen. And it looked impossible, but somehow she was able to move things around and make it possible. That one has always amazed me. It's always with a heavy heart when someone so trusted and so key to the operation of our city wishes to begin a new chapter in their lives and to return, or sorry, retire from their post. However, you leave us in good hands with the new treasurer, Ms. Lochte, and equally important, you leave us in a good financial position to take on the new challenges that our beautiful city deserves. So thank you, Leanne, for all of us in terms of the, the city council, uh, as well as this great city, but most importantly, the citizens of Pembroke, we're gonna miss you. And we do have, uh, we'd ask Ms. <coughs> McIntyre to come up here for a small presentation. Thank you very much for your kind words. I didn't really realize that uh, that I made that much difference. So it's really nice to uh, to hear that. And uh, my 30 years of municipal government, almost half of it has been spent with the city of Pembroke. I worked with a lot of fantastic people, and I mean council members as well as uh, city staff and. Uh, it really is a great organization. You know, everyone has respect for one another. Everyone respects one another's position. And sometimes you have to, you know, come out with some answers that are difficult for people to hear, but they understand that, uh, that you're doing your job and where it's coming from. I've enjoyed my work here. And uh, yes, I'm ready to retire and I'm enjoying my semi-retirement right now. But um, it's, uh, I wouldn't change a thing. And thank you very much to everybody that's uh, made my career as good as it has been with the city. Thank you. Okay, council will consider all matters placed before it and this public meeting is now adjourned.
Oh, okay. I'll yeah, get that. So what do we have? I'd like to call the Parks and Recreation Committee meeting for Tuesday, February 18th to order. Are there any disclosures of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof? Seeing none, could I have a motion to approve the meeting agenda, please? Moved by Councillor Abdallah, seconded by Councillor Reedy. All in favor? Approved. <coughs> the Parks and Recreation Committee minutes have been circulated for January 21st. Could I have a motion to approve the minutes? Moved by Councillor Plummer, seconded by Councillor Deputy Mayor. All in favor? Approved. Bass Fishing Derby, Petawawa Pembroke Civitan. Ron? All right, thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, staff is seeking direction on a request uh, for the use of the space at Centenary Park for the annual Fishing Derby on August 18th of this year. The local Civitan clubs have planned their annual Fishing Derby for Saturday at the waterfront as per previous years. The tournament was even more successful in 2019 with 68 teams participating and a team as far as Manitoba attending. The club will, would work with staff on logistics as per previous years to ensure there's no disruption with the Marina Basin during that day. There is no financial impact with the request other than support if required to assist with the tournament. The tournament will have an economic and a tourism impact with visitors entering the tournament. There is also no formal rental fee associated with the space they use in the field. Great. Councillor Reedy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is an excellent event for the city. Sorry, thank you. And I would um, move that we waive the rental fees for the space at Centenary Park. Okay. Motion on the floor uh, by Councillor Reedy. Councillor Abdallah. I'll uh, second that motion. Seconded. Further comments? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? Approved. Next, Relay for Life request, Ron. All right, Madam Chair, again, uh, staff is seeking direction on a request to waive the rental fees for the PMC for the annual Relay for Life, which to, is to be held Friday, June 19th. Staff have received a request from the Can Canadian Cancer Society to consider a gift of kind sponsorship for the PMC rental costs and associated supports for their annual Relay for Life. The site sponsorship has a value of $5,000. The Canadian Cancer Society moved their event to Pembroke in 2018 and deemed the venue extremely suitable. If approved, recognition benefits and site sponsorship for the city would be identified through material and promotion items for the event. They are formally requesting the use of the facility from June 18th and 19th. The revenue loss for the facility based on their request would be $2,000 should committee consider this request as well as associated labour costs depending on their requirements. Councillor Abdallah. I motion we waive the rental fee for the Relay for Life for the Canadian Cancer Society event on June 19th. Okay, we have a motion on the floor by Councillor Abdallah. Uh, Councillor Plummer? I second the motion. Okay, we have a seconder. Further comments? Deputy Mayor? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Conroy, I'm wondering, uh, this one there actually is a uh, an economic uh, impact, if I can put it that way, in the sense that uh, there is actual uh, fees uh, being uh, requested to be waived and I guess what I'm curious about is uh, from a, a budget standpoint and I don't know if it's an accounting perspective or what have you but um, similar to the uh, this six month trial free in terms of parking there's an actual loss of revenue and so forth and, and during the budget process we had to try and accommodate for that is there a way uh, is it an issue let me put it that way in terms of your budgets is it an issue then for the loss of revenue and if there is is there a way of addressing it um, so that's I guess that's what my question is I, I, I have no issue with what the request is I'm just wondering about the how it is that you account for it and at the end of the year when you have a not a deficit but a reduction 
Okay, Ken, uh, through you, Madam Chair. I guess when you look at it, um, some fees that we're waiving are pretty trivial, like $150 here and there, but these, these numbers are starting to get huge. And you're gonna see another report coming a little bit later here that those rental fees are expensive. And the more we lose that revenue, we start separating from our expenses and revenue. So, but keep in mind, we do have our own special events production. So this could be considered a special event that we are kind of hosting and take that money and put it into the revenue so that that revenue loss is not coming out of the building. So if I may, Madam Chair, I'd like to see that then simply because as Mr. Conroy is saying, it, like, it's $5,000 and then there's all these other requests and it's not that I begrudge what the request is and so forth, it's, it's so that it's accounted for. So if that's the line item that it uh, comes from, I'd, I'd, like to see, I'd like to see that. Further comments? Councillor Abdella? So I'll motion that we take $2,000 from the special events budget, which is 20000 to cover the cost of the Relay for Life uh, event. Okay, a motion on the floor to uh, transfer 2000 from the recreation events budget to cover the costs in the budget. Moved by Councillor Abdella, seconded by Councillor Plummer. I'd like to comment comment um just a question to the cao is that um figure accurate is that what is in the special events budget twenty thousand we have to spend for the city i can answer i, I believe it's twenty five five when we did the adjustments of the budget to split them up i think it was yep yeah. uh if i could make a comment from the chair and i'm not even sure this is possible but Lots of charities come forward and ask us to do very similar things, to waive fees, charges, and there's so many charities, and there's so many worthwhile causes out there. Um, and we seem to be getting more and more over the last few years, whether it's uh, a concert or different things. Is there a way that we could have them pay the fees and then donate it back to the organization? Is there a financial benefit to the city to do that, or is it even possible for a municipality to do that? I'm not, we, uh, staff would certainly have to uh, take a look at that. I don't know if it would mean anything at the end of the day because it's just money in and money out type of thing. But, but if it would be of assistance to, to committee, staff could come back with some thoughts with respect to a policy to address these types of requests that you have before you this evening that seem to be coming more and more. Uh, as an example, some communities have a no grants policy, period. They don't provide any grants, therefore clubs, organizations, they know that so they don't ask. However, if council feels that there's a worthwhile, you know, uh, event that it wants to support or something like that, they certainly can. What, what previous council did and this council has uh, continued is develop the strategic partnership. So they were getting away from general grant requests. But as it relates to the reduction in the fees, as Mr. Conroy has said, the department budgets for certain expenses and offsetting or partially offsetting revenues. So whenever organizations come forward and they're granted a reduction in that, it starts throwing off the budget when the numbers start getting higher. $150 here or there are you know, inconsequential. However, when we're looking at the larger numbers or more often, Perhaps we could be of assistance in providing some wording on a policy to address those types of things. And then to know from the Treasury's perspective where those uh, requests get funded from when they're approved. So certainly we could assist in that regard if committee would like that. So we have a motion on the floor. We have a seconder. Any further comments on the motion? No more. For, I'll call the question and then we'll, I'll ask if direction is sought for... Uh, some kind of policy. Um, all in favor? Okay, so Councillor Abdallah's motion is passed to support the transfer of the $2,000. And now I'll ask for a discussion on whether we want a policy made up about who we waive charges for and who we don't. So I, I guess I'll, I'll yeah. throw it to the, the CAO. I think it's important to have some sort of policy de developed. Uh, certainly, I think in the policy we should have economic spin-off as a um, factor that's weighed, and also if it's for-profit or non-for-profit, certainly would be some things I'd want to see in some sort of policy when we're deciding if we're going to be um, transferring money or waiving fees for that. Thank you. So is committee supportive? I see a lot of head nodding going on, Mr. Lapierre. Thank you very much. Next item. 
Pansy Patch Park wedding request. All right, Madam Chair, staff is seeking direction on a request from a resident to host a wedding ceremony at Pansy Patch on May 30th. Uh, staff received a request to host a ceremony uh, from 1 to 6 p.m. The decorator and the florist will arrive and then the ceremony would begin at 3.45. Following the ceremony, guests will leave and the wedding party will remain for uh, pictures for an additional 45 minutes. Guests will arrive by bus and will be required to walk down the hill and no vehicles will be parking on Dixon Street. Elderly guests will be driven to the parking lot via family members as, well, as well. The wedding party would be parked in the parking lot. There will be no city staff assigned to monitor the use of the park, as this is not an event that we would normally occur at Pansy Patch. Most weddings are being held at the Riverwalk Amphitheater, which would have a city staff present to assist. There is no uh, formal rental fee set up for this type of use for the park, so determining a cost would need to be considered if committee approves the requests or considers charging for the wedding ceremonies. Staff have some concerns that what is being considered the hidden jewel of the city will start to be used uh, more for this type of events and possibly others, which in the past uh, has never knowingly occurred. Staff are aware that wedding pictures are taken though at the park during the summer months, mostly due to the greenery and the flowers being planted by the Horticultural Society. There is no financial implication unless committee directs staff to look into some form of fees for the use of the park for larger events. Okay, um, uh, Councillor Abdallah, then Councillor Reeve. So I reviewed the Pansy Batch Park request and uh, prepared to make a motion to allow the request from the resident to hold a wedding there on May 30th, and I want to congratulate them. And further, that the Parks and Recreation Department come up with a permit application form and policies regarding wedding ceremonies, only cere wedding ceremonies at Pansy Patch Park. And then I'll speak to the motion after, if I have okay. a seconder. Okay, so we have a motion supporting the <coughs> request from Councillor Abdallah. Councillor Reevy? I'll second that motion. Um, actually, I did attend a wedding there, and I guess it wasn't... Uh, Sanction, thank you for the word. Uh, oh gosh, it was early 2000s. But what a beautiful place to have an outdoor wedding. So I'm surprised that, um, that these requests haven't come forward more often. So yes, I am going to second the motion. Thank you. And Councillor Plummer? I was just commenting it's a great idea. I think it's uh, looking forward to it. <laughs> okay. Exactly. I give my support. Okay. And from the chair, we know that we have a lot of work to do down at Pansy Patch that we've we toured around last spring and this and that. So maybe that any money collected from fees could go into some kind of fund for Pansy Patch, either, whether it's extra recept receptacles for garbage or benches, or I think it's a great idea. So that's just my opinion. Uh, Deputy Mayor, you have a comment? Well, more of a, a question. So uh, while I have no issue with the, the use of Pansy Patch, it's certainly a nice venue and so forth. It might have an issue in terms of washrooms because I think there's only one porta potty down there as opposed to what we have available at the waterfront. But is there sufficient then, if, if that motion carries, is there sufficient direction to staff or staff just charges what staff wants to charge? That part I'm trying to figure out. I believe part of the motion was to come up with a, a policy. Mm -hmm. So. And through you, Madam Chair. Well, we currently have a, a fee structure for the amphitheater and there's a booking form and people. D d you know, use the office for that purpose. So it's just a matter of replicating something to, to work at the park. And they have to understand what's that, what's that pansy patch is that pansy patch. You see what you get, you know, so you don't have electrical services, you know, and like the deputy mayor says, there's only one washroom. So if they need amenities, it, they'll have to provide those. Okay, no more comments. One further comment, Councillor Abdallah. So Aurelia, Huntsville, Brockville, and Perth allow the rental of their community parks for wedding ceremonies. Aurelia require a $2 million certificate of insurance. Uh, I was in communication with Mr. Conray. He said they currently don't do that, but they're in the process of reviewing insurance with your carrier. Yes, that's correct. We're looking into our own carrier, Frank Cowan, to be able to provide additional insurance outside of our own for other user groups. Okay. And I just have a further comment. Some areas that we might want to consider in the policy are a defined area for the wedding ceremony with input from the Pembroke Horticultural Society, a, the, the fee structure, the understanding that the park can be used by others during the wedding ceremony, an extra cleanup fee may be administered if deemed necessary by staff, um, parking regulations like the buses, bus necessary, 
a limit on attendees on the numbers. Like you're not going to have 500 people down there. Mm -hmm. Input from the Horticulture Society is important, along with city staff, Algonquin College, and other volunteers who help maintain the park and make it so beautiful. And uh, I believe the more we make Pembroke a destination point, the better. And Perth even have a, uh, a wedding uh, brochure package where they advertise their parks and all of the businesses. So that's something we can talk to the, uh, the Economic Development Committee and officer about. Thank you. Thank you, good points. So um, I'll call the question. All in favor? Approved, thank you. Next item, Sharps Collection Program 2019. Sorry, I Black Creek Rodeo request. And I'm Jared, our staff are seeking direction on a request from the organizers from Black Creek Rodeo, which is scheduled for May 1st and 2nd at, at the PMC to possibly reduce rental fees and consider road closures. So Black Creek Rodeo has booked the PMC for two shows over two days on May 1st and 2nd and used some of their proceeds to support the Soldier On programs. They have requested that committee consider any type of help with rental fees for the PMC to assist with giving back to the troops near and far. Additionally, they have, additionally, they have requested uh, road closures on Monroe Street and Christie Street from 3 to 11 p.m. for both shows Fridays and Saturday nights. Staff reached out and requested comments from the Operations Department regarding this cl closure request and provided the following comments. Emergency service access to Monroe residents and Christie Street businesses would be in jeopardy. Access to the animal hospital would not be plausible if both streets are closed down. Access, access to the residence and apartment complex on Monroe would not be available. And access to the event could cause traffic delays on surrounding roadways like Frank Nyber and Pembroke Street West. As a result, the operation department does not recommend the requested road closure and are suggesting all animal holding, unloading and marshalling be conducted on the PMC property to avoid issues with risk with pedestrians, vehicle traffic and parking for the event. The total rental fee for the use of the PMC for these two days is $4,500. Thank you, Ron. Comments from committee? There's a lot to absorb there. Councillor Abdallah. So, so the the rental fee per day at the PMC is is it twenty five twenty two fifty or twenty five hundred or the, the day of the event is twenty five hundred. All subsequent days are five hundred. So the setup day, a tear down day, okay. and the extra day. So that's how we're getting to that Thank that you. amount. Councillor Plummer. I guess I need a little more information from Ron if it's possible. So, this is a for profit. Um, venue, or is this a, you mentioned the soldiering on as the monies would be going towards that charity? Is that is it a partial for profit, or is it a split? I'm just not sure. If it's, it's not really listed in how its break, breakdown is. If, if you go on their letter of request, you'll see it. Rodeo donate a portion of their proceeds to the soldier. Not it's not all going to the soldier program. So they're they're making money out of this because they're selling sponsorship packages. Can I follow up? Yes, uh, then I guess we go back to our comments earlier with uh, the Relay for Life in developing a policy saying if it's for profit, non for profit, um, what kind of economic spin off is it, you know, is it important to Pembroke and how that. Um, I'm just not sure how, you know, is this, I don't remember this ever happening in Pembroke. Has this happened before, Ron? With a rodeo, you mean? Yeah. No, we've never had a rodeo in, in the arenas before. Now, they're not asking for total waiving fee. They're asking for a, a consideration for a partial relief. If I could, um, I'm going to address the other issues. Um, this is the first and second of the month, and anyone who has talked to paramedics or ambulance, those are really horrible days if you're in the paramedic service, and that is the core of our community. So to close off those roads, I wouldn't be supporting that, especially between those evening hours. Um, emergency vehicles have to be able to respond very quickly. And so for those reasons, I'm out on those, I guess, if you want to put it that way. Um, so I'm open to more comments about the fees from committee members. Councillor Plummer again. 
Well, um, as this is the first event, and I also agree with the chair saying that we don't, we can't have the closing streets and not allowing access to the apartments and not having access for emergency vehicles for animal hospital, things like that. I think they can certainly work hopefully with staff and finding a best solution to not block traffic or block roads. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in the opinion that, you know, maybe this is something that could be built on. Maybe this is a, the first of many, you know, events that could bring something in unique to Pembroke. I'm not sure. I'm certainly not in favor of waiving the full $4,500. I think that's, uh, we still need to charge, uh, make something for it. But I wouldn't be opposed to, um, say, going half at uh, transferring from our economic development fund, which we just did earlier, talk about we had 25500 We took... I guess it was 2,000 out of that, and I'd say we could maybe offer another, say, do the same, do another 2,000 for this event uh, for economic spinoff, and say we can try the event and is in support. Some proceeds going to Soldier On, and that's my motion. Councillor Reedy, thank you. I find this one difficult. Um, I, you know, it's exciting to have a, a new event coming and hopefully that a lot of people will be out to see this rodeo. Um, and I think it's wonderful that they're giving back to the Soldier On Fund as a veteran. I totally, you know, my heart is with that and I think it's, a, it's a, a great thing. And I think we probably can help with the fees, maybe not to the extent that Councillor Plummer is suggesting he's making up for a few years. Um, I would, I would say maybe a thousand. That's where I would sit. Thank you. Mayor LeMay. I agree uh, in regards to the road closures. We shouldn't have any road closures. In regards to, to uh, your motion, are we talking about the thousand dollars or whatever it is to come out of the event fund, as we did with the other one? Correct. Okay. Thank you. So, Councillor Reedy, are you going to pre prepare to make a motion? Or th is, did you make a motion, I, sir? I did for 2000 I, I did for 2000 Would you withdraw it? I would withdraw if I see more heads nodding, if they'd be up for 1000 A 1000 yeah. Then we can try it at that point. I would amend my motion to make it for $1,000. Seconded by Councillor Reedy. That. Thank you. Thank you. But for also included in that motion is no road closures. No road closures. Okay. Further comments? Mr. Conroy, can I just get clarification on if we, are we reducing it by a thousand or only charging them a thousand? Reducing it by a thousand. Thousand off the top. Okay. okay. <laughs> correct. They, correct. They've added. They wanted forty-five. The request for forty-five hundred, and we're going to reduce by one thousand dollars. So the charge will be thirty-five hundred. Correct. Okay. See everyone nodding. I'll call the question. All in favor? Approved. Sharps Collection Program for 2019. All right, Madam Chair, this is just an information item to share with the committee tonight. Um, Council approved the needle uh, drop box program in 2016 at the request of the Police Services Board. Locations were reviewed and three drop box were set up and monitored regularly for collection purposes. Staff have begun collaborating with the Renfrew County District Health Unit to coordinate the disposal of the Sharps, as it was quite evident that a lot of what was being collected was given out by the health unit. Disposal of the Sharps collected since the beginning of the program was done in December of 2019, again with the assistance of the health unit and their disposal company that they use for their own purposes. Data collected over the year at each, data was collected over the year at each drop-off location. Numbers indicated that the box at AOTC on John Street is the most popular for the drop-off. Random locations were collected as well, but mostly based on calls from residents. It appears that the program is successful in attempting to remove sharps in the streets or in the garbage collection. Cost for staff to collect the sharps, dispose, and organize for proper disposal in 2019 was $2,467.91. Councillor Plummer. Thank you. Uh, well, obviously we can see by the total amount of sharps being collected, this is a worthwhile program, keeping them off the streets and out of the waste recovery center. Um, I am a board member on there and they certainly have a, a sharps program. It's very um, important for their line workers to be aware and uh, we never want uh, someone getting pricked by a sharp and keeping them out of the uh, general garbage and disposing them properly inside of uh, 
uh, liquid uh, detergent uh, bottles and sealing the top and marking on the sharps on top, and that's uh, acceptable. But just throwing them into um, your uh, your bin and uh, they disappear from there, it, it's it's really dangerous for workers. So uh, I'm appreciative of the program and I look forward to having it continue. Thank you. And I believe that was an information only. Thank you very much. If there's nothing further, I would call for a motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Reeves, seconded by Councillor Plummer. All in favor? This meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Okay, we'll call the Operations Committee meeting to order for February 18th. Any disclosures of pecuniary interest this evening? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to approve the agenda as circulated. I've got Councillor Abdallah, Councillor Reavy. Those in favour? That's carried. The minutes of December 17th, 2019 have been circulated. Uh, moved by Councillor Frenny, second by Councillor Plummer. Those in favour? They're adopted. New business, welcome Mr. Lewis. First up is drinking water system. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Operations Department recommends that committee accept the City of Pembroke Drinking Water System 2019 Annual Water Reports and that the Mayor and the Chair of Operations sign and approve the reports. The committee report includes three different annual drinking water system reports being the summary report per Schedule 22 and the Section 11 report, both per the Ontario Regulation 170-03. And it also includes the summary of raw water taking and transfer per Ontario Regulation 387-04. <clears throat> Excuse me. The attached reports meet the requirements as stated under the Safe Water Drinking Act and must be prepared each year no later than February 28th for the preceding calendar year. The summary reports must be endorsed by, council, by a resolution of council and it will be before council later this evening. 
copy of the annual reports will be made available to all drinking water system owners connected to the city's drinking water system for which the city provides all of its drinking water. In this case, that would be the Township of Laurentian Valley. As part of the water taking and transfer regulations, all raw water taking data is provided to the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks. Per the regulations, reports are made available for inspection by any member of the public during regular business hours and they are available at City Hall and at the water purification plant. As well, an electronic copy is also available on the City's website. And there are no financial implications associated with this committee report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lewis. Any questions, comments? Seeing none. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lewis. Sir. Yes, Councillor Frenier? Question. Thank you. <laughs> I forgot my handy dandy sign. Um, <laughs> through the chair to Mr. Lewis, this is not related, but it is related. In lieu of the, uh, the, the, the people that are holding up the trains and different things that are going on right now, I know that one report that was that I watched on the news the other evening said it was affecting a lot of the chemicals that are needed in water uh, treatment and that type of thing, such as potash and that. And it was getting to a critical state. Are we okay when it comes to our supplies of those chemicals, or is that impeding our operation at all yet? Through you, Mr. Chair, at this point it is not. We have been making contact with all of our suppliers. All of our suppliers have enough stock, and they're doing fairly well right now, and everything is shipped to us by truck. So we haven't had any issues whatsoever, nor do we foresee any in the, in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Lapierre, next up is uh, the Pembroke Climate Action Advisory Committee. Yes, thank you, Mr. <coughs> Chair. Uh, staff is seeking direction uh, with respect to the establishment of a Pembroke Climate Action Advisory Committee and the associated terms of reference for that particular committee, which is provided in your packages in draft form. So at its regular scheduled meeting of February 4th, 2020, Council adopted the following motion, that Council for the Corporation of the City of Pembroke actively pursue the declaration of a climate emergency as more than 475 other municipalities in Ontario and Canada have already done, and further, that staff be directed to report back on the matter of the establishment of a Climate Action Advisory Committee at the committee meetings scheduled for February 18th, 2020. So as per that direction, you have the report before you. And once the terms of reference are approved, an advertisement will be placed in the local newspaper as well as on the city's website uh, seeking applicants. And once the applications have been received, submissions uh, will be forwarded to the council, to council striking committee for review and recommendation onto council for appointment. I can advise that the draft terms of reference were reviewed with the individuals that previously presented to committee and they have indicated no issues or concerns with respect to the document. And I can further advise that there is no financial implication uh, with respect to this particular committee, as all members are deemed to be volunteers, similar to other advisory committees, and they are not compensated for their time. Councillor Reeving. I would move that we accept the report to um, establish this committee with the terms of reference as presented. I'll second the motion. Seconded by Councillor Abdalla. Any other comments, questions? Councillor Lafreniere? Uh, it says a minimum of two. <laughs> Sorry. It says a minimum of two members of council. Um, I have no problem with having two, but there may not always be two available. So I was thinking two members of council, but minimum of one. Like, so that's my only, because we all have a lot of meetings <coughs> to go to. And I know that I sit on some committees where as long as one of us is there, we can update the others. So that would be my only issue because we all know how busy we are. Mr. Lapier. Yes, sir. I'm happy to speak to that. Is it, uh, the, the point is to have a minimum of two appointed doesn't mean that they have to be present to make a quorum. So if any point in time, one cannot attend, or perhaps one evening, maybe two cannot attend. This is an advisory committee, so it's certainly struck to include members of council, but also the broader public uh, as well. Okay, okay. Councillor Plummer. 
Uh, just a comment. I sit on the Economic Development Advisory Committee, and it's amazing the different cross-section of people that you would never actually meet uh, in my, you know, your day-to-day -day goings that apply for these committees and sit on and bring uh, unique ideas to what the city could be doing. And I look forward to seeing what sort of ideas and people uh, apply for this committee. I think it's a very important thing to get uh, public engaged more in city council and in its ongoing throughout the city. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Abdallah. Uh, just a comment for the CAO, Mr. Lapierre. Uh, people that do not live in Pembroke can apply if, if it's the deemed that they'd be you know, a valuable asset. So I just want to make that, that's, that's correct, right? Yes, generally speaking, council looks for residents, ratepayers of the city of Pembroke to participate on its advisory committees. However, council does have the ability, if they feel that somebody is out there that could make a very valuable, positive contribution to the community as it relates to the advisory committee, then it's certainly wide open for council to approve them. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Call the question. Those in favor? And that's carried. A motion to adjourn. Moved by Councilor Reeves, second by Councilor Abdalla. We are adjourned.
I'd like to call this council meeting of Tuesday, February the 18th, 2020 to order. Before opening this meeting of council, I would ask those who wish, each in your own way, each in your own words, aloud or silently, join in a prayer of guidance over these proceedings. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Disclosure of pecuniary interests and general nature thereof. None. Our minutes, approval of our minutes from our council meeting held on February the 4th, 2020. Moved by Councillor Reeve, second, and by Councillor Lafreniere. All those in favour? Carried. Adopt our committee minutes of, from Parks and Recreation of January the 21st, 2020. Moved by Councillor Lafreniere, second, by Councillor Abdallah. All those in favour? Carried. The Operations Committee meeting held on December the 17th, uh, 2019. Moved by Councillor Plummer, second by Councillor Reevey. All those in favour? Carried. Receiving the minutes from the 50-plus Active Living Centre of November the 13th, 2019, the Pembroke Heritage Murals of February the 5th, 2020, and the Ottawa Valley Waste Management Board of November the 26th, 2019. Moved by Councillor Reevey, seconded by Councillor Abdalla. All those in favour? Carried. Bylaws, the 2020 uh, 07 budget. Councillor Plummer. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by myself, said by Councillor Frenny, that bylaw 2020 07, a bylaw to adopt the sum required during the year 2020 for the general and special purposes of the City of Pembroke be adopted and passed. And further, that said bylaw be signed by the Mayor and Clerk and sealed with the seal of the Corporation. With Council's permission, what I'd like to do, because we've been going through several of these, is just uh, uh, ask for uh, the motion. So it was moved by Councillor Plummer and seconded by Councillor Fernier. So all those in favour? Okay, carried. Uh, 08 Waste Management Disposal. Councillor Plummer. Thank you, Worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Fernier. The bylaw 2020 08, a bylaw to impose an annual fee to defer the expenses of the collection and disposal of waste be adopted and passed, and further the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Okay, bylaw 2020 08, moved by Councillor Plummer and seconded by Councillor Lafreniere. All those in favor? Carried. Uh, Deputy Mayor, Bylaw 2020-09. Thank, Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, bylaw 2020-09, a bylaw to amend Bylaw 68-44 to establish sewage service rates and their structure be adopted and passed, and further that the said bylaw be signed by the Mayor and Clerk and sealed with the seal of the Corporation. Thank you. <coughs> Bylaw 2020-09, moved by Deputy Mayor Jervis, seconded by Councillor Abdalla. All those in favour? Carried. 2020-10, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Again, uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Abdalla, the bylaw 2020-10, a bylaw to amend bylaw 83-93 to provide for the administration, operation, and regular Sorry, regulation of waterworks be adopted and passed, and further that said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Thank you. 
Bylaw 2020-010, moved by Deputy Mayor Gervais, seconded by Councillor Abdallah. All those in favor? Carried. Uh, the PBI rates, Councillor Abdallah. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Ron Gervais, that bylaw 2020-11, a bylaw to adopt the 2020 <clears throat> Pembroke Business Improvement Association budget and to establish rates to be levied, be adopted and passed, and further, that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Bylaw 2020-11, moved by Councillor Abdallah, seconded by the Deputy Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. Councillor Abdallah, do you have comments? Thank you, Your Worship. This is a bylaw uh, to adopt budget estimates for the Pembroke Business Improvement Area and to establish the PBA rates for 2020. The total budget is $196,726, resulting in a PBIA, PBIA rate increase of 2.69%. Thank you. Bylaw 2020-12, tax ratios, Deputy Mayor. Your Worship, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Abdallah, that bylaw 2020-12, a bylaw to establish tax ratios for prescribed property classes for the year 2020 be adopted and passed, and further that the said bylaw be signed by the Mayor and Clerk and sealed with the seal of the Corporation. Thank you. Bylaw 2020-12, moved by Deputy Mayor Jervis, seconded by Councillor Abdallah. All those in favour? Carried. Uh, bylaw 2020-13, Councillor Plummer. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Frenet, that bylaw 2020-13, a bylaw to impose an annual <clears throat> fee to defer the expenses of waste management facilities and services be adopted and passed, and further the said bylaw be signed by the Mayor and Clerk and sealed with the seal of the Corporation. Bylaw 2020-13, moved by Councillor Plummer, second by Councillor Lafreniere. All those in favour? Okay, carry. 2020-14, uh, Councillor Lafreniere. The MOU? Yep, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor, I'm sorry, Deputy Mayor Gerba, that bylaw 2020-14, a bylaw to authorize the entering into a memorandum of understanding between the City of Pembroke and the County of Renfrew for shared cost services for long-term care homes be adopted and passed. And further that the said bylaw be signed by the Mayor and Clerk and sealed with the seal of the Corporation. Moved by Councilor Lafreniere, seconded by Deputy Mayor Gervais. That bylaw 2020-14. All those in favor? Okay, carried. Do you have any comments? Yeah, in the interest of stability, um, the history is that they calculate how many residents we have living in the homes for ages, ages, aged, sorry. Um, the costs can fluctuate and it's very, makes it very difficult for us to budget. So the, the county asked us if they would like to stabilize by doing an average and we've agreed to and we can open up this memorandum of understanding again in 2021. Thank you. Bylaw 2020-15, Councillor Reeby. Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> Moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Gervais. That bylaw 2020-15, a bylaw to appoint municipal bylaw enforcement officers for the City of Pembroke be adopted and passed. And further that, the said bylaw be signed by the Mayor and Clerk and sealed with the seal of the Corporation. Moved by Councillor Reevy, seconded by Deputy Mayor Gervais. That bylaw 2020-115. Uh, All those in favour? Okay, carried. Councillor Reevy, do you have comments? <coughs> um, actually, this bylaw repeals the former bylaw 2019-52. Um, it just needs to be updated to remove the former supervisor of roads and fleet and add the new supervisor of roads and fleet, which is Brad Fott. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bylaw 2020-16, Councillor Lafreniere. Moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Driva, that 
that bylaw 2020-16, a bylaw to license and govern certain businesses in the city of Pembroke be adopted and passed. And further that the said bylaw be signed. Sorry. Be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Bylaw 2020-16, moved by Council Lafreniere, seconded by Deputy Mayor Gervais. All those in favor? Okay, carried. Comments, Council Lafreniere? Uh, the previous licensing bylaw, 2020-06, that was approved on January 21st, has to be repealed and replaced with the bylaw that you heard tonight. Um, just because the Ministry of the Eternal, Attorney General's Office made some little tweaks just in the language, really. So this is just a sort of a housekeeping. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Motion, resolution 08, Deputy Mayor. Your Worship, uh, moved by myself, second by Councillor Abdallah, be it resolved that the Corporation of the City of Pembroke endorses the City of Pembroke Drinking Water System 2019 Annual Water Reports. Thank you. Moved by Deputy Mayor Jervis, seconded by Councillor Abdallah, be it resolved that the Corporation of the City of Pembroke endorses the City of Pembroke Drinking Water System 2019 annual water reports. All those in favor? Okay, carried. Mayor's report. I had the pleasure of bringing greetings on behalf of Council and presenting a scroll to Mrs. Ferrelli and family at Sunday's Pembroke Lumber Kings game. On this occasion, a special banner was raised at the PMC to honor the accomplishments of Jim Ferrelli. He was a Lumber Kings coach for eight seasons in the 1980s and Mr. Ferrelli led the Lumber Kings to six league championships. He was also instrumental in bringing the 1998 Centennial Cup National Junior A Championship Tournament to Pembroke. This week we celebrate Heritage Week, which runs from February the 17th to the 23rd, and this year's theme is bringing the past into the future. Pembroke will celebrate Heritage Day this coming Saturday, February the 22nd, beginning at 1 p.m. at the Pembroke Legion. The area museums and history groups have come together to showcase our local history. And I thank them and that all the various heritage organizations that are involved in setting up this display. So I'd encourage all of our residents to visit the heritage display this Saturday, beginning at 1 o'clock at the Legion. Any notices of motion? None. Any councillor updates? Councillor Abdallah. Thank you, Your Worship. I have two, two updates. Um, we want to welcome another business downtown. This <coughs> business is uh, Bliss Hairstyling, and it's located beside the, the Pembroke Little Canning Company. And also, uh, two weeks from yesterday, our second uh, neighborhood watch meeting will take place at the new Pembroke Fire Hall on Monday, March 2nd at 7 p.m. So we welcome all newcomers. Thank you. Excellent. Any other comments? Okay, we will be moving into closed session. Council Lafreniere. Moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Jerva, that this meeting become a closed meeting to discuss personal matters about an unidentifiable, un unidentifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees. Uh, moved by Councillor Lafreniere, seconded by Deputy Mayor Gervais, that this meeting become a closed meeting to discuss personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees. All those in favor? Thank you. We will now move into closed session. <laughs> 